Hi, my name is Chris with Samson Rope. In this video, we'll discuss mooring line durability, both what it is and why it matters for safe operations. We'll learn about tension fatigue, abrasion, and creep, and how they interact to affect the integrity of the mooring system over time. Finally, we'll discuss the importance of selecting your lines based on overall durability and performance and not strength alone. Okay, let's get started. Assessing a mooring line's reliability requires an understanding of its ability to handle the conditions it is designed for, as well as the unplanned events that inevitably occur. It's important to remember that the mooring lines are the working components of a mooring system. Even though winch brakes are meant to serve as a first line of defense against overloading, it is the lines and tails themselves that are absorbing energy from the environment. And for this reason, they are typically the first component to fatigue. This is why understanding their performance and selecting lines that can withstand extreme conditions is crucial to ensure the correct safety margin in your operation throughout the entire lifetime of your lines. This may seem obvious to some, but mooring line durability is not typically considered in the early phases of vessel design. Instead, the designer or shipbuilder will use the guidelines set forth by OCIMF or IACS to determine the vessel's requirements for rope strength and system elasticity through a series of simulations. These simulations utilize a standard environmental criterion to confirm that the rope's initial strength provides sufficient safety margin. However, they do not account for damage or degradation of the mooring system over time. Once the mooring system specifications are set, operators have a wide variety of options when selecting mooring rope products. Products might look comparable, but in fact, they will all have different performance characteristics and operational results. Unfortunately, the industry has very little standardized framework to help you make deeper assessments of the line's fatigue and damage resistance characteristics. OCIMF took the first step to close this gap with their publication of MEG-4. In Appendix B, there are a series of standardized tests to help compare the performance of different products. However, there are still a lot of variables to interpret when making comparisons. Having a deep understanding of a line's fatigue, durability, and damage tolerance is critical to making an informed selection that is suitable for your operation and maintenance practices. To further illustrate this point, in the field, as soon as mooring lines are installed and deployed for the first time, their properties begin changing. As the lines are exposed to tension and extreme loading, various changes occur within the rope structure. The fibers begin to elongate, the rope abrades, and the internal temperature of the rope can increase due to a phenomenon called hysteresis. These changes result from the inherent function that the mooring lines entail serve as the energy absorbing components of the mooring system. With all these variables involved, it can be difficult to translate these properties onto a spec sheet, but they play a critical role in the mooring line's expected service life and ability to withstand unexpected loading conditions. If these external conditions are not properly accounted for, service life can be significantly reduced, or worse, line failures could occur. With over five decades of experience in the mooring industry, Samson has an in-depth understanding of our product's fatigue properties and how they respond to various types of damage. We're dedicated to sharing this information with you and helping you make better informed line selection, management, and retirement decisions. When you're selecting a mooring line based on durability, it's important to understand what actually drives fatigue. For most mooring operations, the constant loading and unloading of the rope results in tension fatigue, which we'll describe here as the sum of two important wear modes, abrasion and creep. We will discuss both of these wear modes in detail, but first, let's look at abrasion. While more obvious forms of external abrasion are easy to see and understand, internal abrasion also occurs as the rope's strands rub against each other and against the contact surfaces of the vessel. This mechanical damage will slowly degrade the rope's load carrying capability and increase stress on the yarns that are still fully intact. As you compare spec sheets for products, you may notice that Samson's mooring lines typically have a higher linear density than our competitors. This is because we design our ropes based on performance needs and therefore use a higher twist ratio. The result is greater material content and a tighter rope structure. This increases abrasion resistance, improves handling, reduces snagging, and lowers the stress on each individual fiber. Once our products are in the field, we also encourage and advise our customers on what they can do to reduce abrasion in their operations. For example, identifying common contact points and making sure deck surfaces are properly finished and maintained. This reduced roughness on the surface will allow the mooring lines to slide more easily, requiring less energy and making the line less prone to abrasion damage. 
More intact fiber means greater ability to withstand those tension cycles over time. The second primary contributor to tension fatigue is creep. Creep only occurs at the molecular level and describes the elongation of the fibers as the polymer chains slide during sustained long-term loading. Creep rates are increased by high stress and elevated temperatures. Because stress and temperature dictate the creep rate of the fiber, we can analyze the rope's expected service life using these two pieces of information. Increased stress is fairly straightforward. For a given rope, higher loads result in higher stress on the fiber. For a given load, ropes made with more material will result in lower stress on the fiber. This is one reason why rope design matters in durability. Higher strand twist levels might not increase the rope's initial strength, but will reduce the stress on the fibers during cyclic loading, thereby increasing its life, all things being equal. When your lines are exposed to higher than expected peak loads from a storm or unplanned conditions, the lines may experience accelerated fatigue. These events can reduce the remaining safety margin of your system by degrading the rope's condition more rapidly than anticipated compared to normal loading conditions. Temperature, the second factor influencing creep rates, is a little more complex. The polymers that make up the rope demonstrate what's called viscoelastic behavior, meaning that the molecules will slowly slip and stretch during loading cycles. Most of this stretch is elastic, meaning that it will return to its original state. However, some of the energy absorbed from that elongation in the material is dissipated as heat. In simpler terms, as the rope cycles, the temperature of the rope increases until it comes to a steady state, which can further accelerate fatigue. Understanding how unplanned loading conditions can lead to heating helps reduce the risk of further accelerating line fatigue, and should be considered in rope design and deployment. Samson experts have developed a range of tools that can be used to help with product selection, taking these factors into consideration. Depending on your needs, we can advise on how they will contribute to overall line life, help you set and manage retirement and maintenance schedules, or review other operational considerations. Now that we've covered mooring line durability and better understand the risks of tension fatigue, abrasion, and creep, let's talk about how you can make more informed design and purchasing decisions based on this risk. A rope's construction and its material are the two biggest factors that drive abrasion and creep rates. However, neither of these two provides a truly comprehensive description of the rope's performance alone. When choosing your lines, it's critical that you do not base your decisions solely on specified strength. A balanced construction with a relatively high twist will maximize abrasion resistance and reduce fiber stress. Imagine a line made of perfectly straight fibers, all parallel with no twisting or braiding of any kind. In the lab, under perfect conditions, this line will technically be stronger than a traditionally twisted and braided construction. But now imagine that same line actually in the field, bending and scraping around a fair lead or capstan. The unbound, unprotected fibers would immediately break from the rough surfaces and added strain. When reviewing a spec sheet, lower strength to weight ratios for the same fiber and primary construction type is a good indicator that this rope has higher twist ratios, which will often equate to a longer service life. Next to consider is the base material. The fiber will have a major influence on what properties are observed at the macro level. Consider nylon fiber. It has a relatively low tensile strength and an extremely low modulus of elasticity, making it an appropriate material for mooring tails, which need to be able to stretch under typical loading conditions. When selecting your main line, however, a stiffer product with a higher strength to size ratio is preferred, making HMP fiber an excellent choice. Even within this family of fibers, there are differences in polymers and processing that can lead to different performance properties. HMPE fiber grades like Dyneema SK78 and DM20 are significantly more abrasion resistant than aramid fibers, and they are extremely resistant to creep when compared to other HMPE grades. Compared to ropes made with generic HMPE fibers, Samson's Amsteel X has three times higher fatigue resistance. For maximum performance and fatigue resistance, our Eversteel X product outperforms generic HMP rope products by six times. Both products leverage Samson's long experience in optimizing 12-strand rope constructions for balancing longevity with strength to weight ratios. We stand by our products and make this guarantee by offering an extended product warranty as well. By extending the life of your mooring lines and better understanding your current line's conditions, Samson is here to help you make accurate, informed decisions to maintain reliable safety margins in your operations and maximize your return on investment. Thank you for watching this video. To recap, we covered mooring line durability, both what it is and why it matters, 
Then we discuss tension fatigue, abrasion, and creep as elements of change on your lines. Finally, we ended with why it's critical you select lines based on overall durability and performance and not strength alone. Your Samson team is dedicated to sharing this in-depth knowledge and helping you make informed, data-driven decisions about your mooring lines. Samson has the right products to meet your needs and improve your operational safety. Talk with your Samson representative today.